So why are A24 films so dang good? And the Oscar goes to... For a company that popped up just a little while ago, they already have 55 Academy Award nominations and 16 wins. How does a company with only 12 years of experience, six of which they weren't even producing their own films, make so much news and noise in Hollywood. When you think of the giant behemoths that A24 is up against, it's incredible the amount of waves that they have created in the industry. They also made the film Waves. That wasn't intentional, but I love that film. Some of the other studios have been around for over 100 years, but feels like all anyone wants to talk about these days is A24. So how does a young, tiny company with tiny budgets take over like this? By the way, this video is brought to you by Sennheiser. More on that later. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not rude, it doesn't boast. Love also forgets wrong. The first thing right out of the gate with A24 is they're telling new films. These are new scripts and they're fun films. And I think of a new trailer like Problemista, I really want to see that film. They're not just rehashing old franchises or pulling from the bowels of the Marvel universe. Which of you asked for three Spider-Man franchises? Who are you? Show yourself in the comments. I find people who love Marvel, they get so agitated. I love, love getting under your skin. Huh? But moving on, let's talk about three of the main reasons that make A24 films so dang good. The first point is risk taking. Not only are they working on new scripts, which don't always have the backing of a history of an audience that has already bought into that world, but they are often working with new directors and they'll pair them with the talented Hollywood actor or actress and this becomes a winning combination. With A24 films, there is minimal intervention from the studio. They are known to give unprecedented and creative freedom for their directors. Over the last 12 years, A24 has made 147 films, or at least released and distributed them. And of those films, the average budget has been $8 million. This might sound like a lot, but when you compare it to some of the Marvel films who are well over 200 million, sometimes $300 million, this is measly. A lot of Hollywood A-list actors won't even show up to set for $8.5 million. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now that budget does include the first six years that A24 was only distributing films, but since then they have now started producing and being the production company as well. But that budget, that mid-range indie film budget, makes directors push their craft more and rely on the performances of their cast. It forces the directors to lean into the story, lean into the script, lean into the performance of their cast, lean into the art direction, and not just the crazy Hollywood tentpole explosions and car chase scenes that become so repetitive. This is why A24 films are so fresh and why they become cult classics. I can remember my first time watching Waves at TIFF and man, did that film captivate me. Or Uncut Gems, or Minari. These films move you, and A24 consistently does this by picking the right talent and giving them just enough resources, but not too much. It is so freaking hot in my office, and we're in Canada, which is stupid because Canada's cold most of the time. Stop whining! A24 films are bold. They sometimes are disturbing, but not solely focused on the shock value that you might see from some indie horror studios. Some of the bigger studios in Hollywood will hire young directors only because they know they can bully them around. This is often seen in some of these big franchises. This is because studio execs in their contracts with these directors who are just so eager to get these opportunities will actually have creative control in post-production. They can bully them and even sometimes kick them out of the edit suite so that they don't finish the film. But this is not the case with A24. They have been known to nurture and give as much space and room for directors to see through their vision. And this has helped pull in some of the most talented directors to A24. Because if you're gonna make a name for yourself, you have to try something new. You think of a film, everything, everywhere, all at once. This was a unique film. You hadn't seen something like this before. I also loved Ex Machina, kind of felt like Ghost in the shell meets space odyssey there was that silent long tension this is the type of psychological thriller that's refreshing and not just gore and shock also how can i not go without saying the whale 
That film was incredible. And not only did it just take place in one room, which really felt like watching a stage play, but Brendan Fraser delivered an absolutely compelling role from someone who was mostly stuck on a couch. A24 loves taking risks. When they finally worked on production on their first film, Moonlight, they worked with a director who hadn't shot something for eight years. And Moonlight really set the tone and look for so many of their films to come. They've even started working on documentaries, working with one of my favorite documentary directors, Jesse Moss, on Boy State. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, that was one of the highest purchases for a documentary ever. It was like nearly $10 million. This small to medium-sized budget with absolute creative freedom has been something that A24 knows is their secret sauce, and they continue to produce incredible films year after year. And speaking of tight budgets, when making passion projects, you don't often have the luxury of the funds that you might be used to. I know we're making a lot of documentaries right now and we're self-funding them until we can find the funding. And this means that it's tough to always afford the crew you want. So we've had to record our own sound. We'll know how to laugh, which is great. We put a shotgun on our camera and then we've been running a wireless shotgun and giving it to our producer. And the solution we've been using is the Sennheiser ENG set. And what we've been doing, I'll explain this thing in a sec, we've been adding their SKP little plug-in device here to their 416 mic. Now I don't have footage of this actually on set, but we'll hand this to our producer and what's great is he'll walk around pointing this right at our subjects. And the 416 sounds amazing. It's so directional. So I'll have the labs on our subjects, I'll have a 416 on my camera, and then most recently our producer Tad, he'll walk around and whoever's talking who doesn't have a mic on, he'll point this at them. And sometimes they'll even point it at them if they have a mic just because it sounds so dang good. And what's really cool with the SKP is you can put a micro SD card in here and record 32-bit float audio. So not only is this being sent to our camera, but at the same time, it's recording audio internally as a backup. We've been able to kit ourselves out to have this wireless audio solution, and it sounds dang good. Also with the EWDP set is this, the receiver, and you can have all of the readout for your camera pack right here, so it's quick to change. Compromising on your audio is unacceptable, and when we have to take the sound recording into our own hands, we are always using Sennheiser audio products. If you're interested in these Sennheiser products, put some links below. And thank you, Sennheiser, for always supporting these videos. Now back to A24. One of the things that you can always expect from A24 film is the look. The cinematography stands out. Ever since they distributed one of their first films, Spring Breakers, there has always been a bold cinematic style, which includes a lot of neon or heavy saturated looks, full color washes like you'll see in the movies Waves or even Uncut Gems. Uncut Gems. Right. I do think that this is overemphasized, that this is the only way A24 shoots. Films like Macbeth, which were 4x3 black and white, really stood out. Or a film like Sing Sing, this was shot on 35mm, but with that up close wide lensing. I really love the cinematography on this. I had the opportunity to interview the cinematographer Pat Scola on this at TIFF and really appreciated his intimate approach with this. And one thing I really liked about Sing Sing is it's blurring that line between scripted film and documentary. There's a lot of films like this these days. Sing Sing actually took inmates, who some of them who had just been released a few weeks before, and they actually acted in the film, often recreating scenes from their own lives. It's a beautiful film, highly recommend it. Cannot wait for it to be released worldwide. Hold that feeling. A24 cares so much about their cinematography that they put huge emphasis all the way down to how their logo appears in the film. And what's fun with A24 films is each film has a unique way of presenting their logo. There's actually whole YouTube montages showing the different ways that their logo has appeared in different films. I really appreciate this about A24. They care about their aesthetic, they care about their merchandise, they care about their entire package. Which is actually, just thinking of this, is kind of what makes A24 unique, is they treat themselves like one entity, like a director. Directors in the industry, especially commercial directors who are trying to cross over into scripted films, have to push their persona, their own personal brand. They will shoot commercials and not often talk about that, but then the films that they celebrate are their passion projects or commercials where they've had their director's cut. This is actually similar to A24. There's some films that A24 has made that you won't hear about. They go direct to the streamers. But then A24 will work on some smaller passion projects that they know won't make money, but that will elevate their brand. They're almost like a director who cares about what they wear and how they show up to set. The perception of A24 is that they do care about the artistry. And I've only heard good things from the few directors that I've spoken with who've worked with A24, that they've been able to feel empowered to create the projects that they wanted to make. Which is my last point about A24. 
they are able to pull in the talent. There's actors like Zac Efron, Tilda Swinton, heck, even Denzel Washington, who will take a smaller cut of what they're normally used to in their pay to get to work on these A24 films because they know it's the chance to really express themselves and explore some creative freedom and work with new directors who are going to be bringing fresh new scripts. Although the irony is Macbeth is one of the oldest scripts in the world. That's kind of funny. But that's what's so fun about an A24 film is I think of the Iron Claw. Getting to see someone like Zac Efron who's often in films like, I don't know, Baywatch or these High School Musical. <laughs> Terrible. But getting to see them in raw performances. Getting to see them in films that have that kind of documentary style and feel. There is a polish to A24 films, but it isn't the high gloss, sterile feel of a lot of the bigger studio films. You get to see the actors and actresses that you've come to know and love in roles that feel all too real. This has been the power of the brand of A24. These films, these directors, these scriptwriters are exploring the human condition and not just rehashing old franchises. And I love it. It's been great for filmmaking. I can't imagine the last 12 years in Hollywood without A24. And I'm excited to see the next 12 years and hopefully beyond with them. This year, go make sure to check out Janet Planet, Sing Sing, and Problemista. These are three new films from A24 that are coming out. It's incredible how many they turn out. And also, if you're watching this video, go check out Sennheiser. And take back the pricing on the sound people. I love you sound people. You're amazing. You do really great work. Just like, man, your prices. They're crazy. I hate goodbyes, but I love doing my own sound now. If you made it this far, leave. What should you leave? Oh yeah, made it this far, leave the shock emoji. Ah. Thank you, see you on the next one.